Welcome to Truthzilla. I am Megan sitting across town from Scott and Ed, and Hello. we are joined by Chris, the owner at Core Fusion in Eugene, Oregon. How are you tonight, Chris? It's a beautiful day outside. Well, it's a beautiful night outside anyway. It, it was a gorgeous day for sure. <laughs> so, Chris, we brought you in because we have been screaming at the top of our lungs for the past almost year now that uh, what we're seeing in the world is um, just so beyond our ability to comprehend. And we're just so frustrated that people aren't able to see it and wake up to it. And one of the things that we've really been trying to promote is, you know, local business owners who have stood up against uh, these, these lockdown orders and have just decided to stay tyranny. open, you know? Um, yeah. For, against this tyranny for, for lack of any other better word. I don't see any other other way to characterize what's going on. Um, you know, we've, we've shouted out like Trudy's um, there's another fitness place. I can't remember on top of my head, but. Um, Was it uh, Rena up in South Yeah. Yeah. Rena, Rena. Rena. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah Rena and, 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 Ooh. And you just came onto our radar within the last week or so. And we we're like, well, oh, my we, God, we got to get because, him on. Well, my girlfriend, who I used to go to a, a different gym in town that I ended up losing over the mask mandates and they were starting to temperature check and I wasn't going to have any of it. We all remember yeah. that big blow up. Um, and so <laughs> <laughs> so we we all have been looking for a gym, all of quarantine that would allow us to be, you know, normal human beings and, and yeah. exercise in whatever way we were comfortable um, and then I saw my girlfriend who was at the old gym with me uh, in pictures, like over and over working out there with you, Chris. And I was like, where are you? Tell me how I can find you. Why aren't you yes. wearing a mask? And yeah. so anyways, and that was, then I started telling everybody. So. And so, so Chris, I just want to ask, you know, cause we've, we've been sitting here and not going to a gym for most of the last year, wanting to go to a gym. Now I, I've been told you have been open this entire time. Is that correct? The, so I'll, I'll go back to last, uh, last March. Okay. So when everything hit the fan, so to speak, um, you know, we were cautious because nobody really knew what was going on. Sure. And, and I thought it was pretty fair that we all took a minute to kind of figure out what in the hell was going on. Um, we went outside for a couple of weeks and just kept grinding. We weren't supposed to, they wanted everything stopped. No groups, no nothing. And I had groups of, uh, 10 to 40 at a time outdoors, just smashing it on whatever football field we could get into. And then they started locking those. So about the time they, they shut us out of them and started chasing me around town. I just said the hell with it. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just go back inside. So I blacked out my windows, uh, put up my middle fingers and away we went. And, yes. uh, there was, uh, the second round of closure. Cause we weren't sure how, like, like, vigilant they're going to be on shutting people down we went back outside for a week but as soon as we realized it was just uh false flag cannon fodder we just said this is stupid um you know and is i'm a i'm a i'm a human being who believes that i i live in i do i live in the greatest country on the planet no, nobody can nobody can question that and uh you know we're we're, we're a nation where we're allowed to have choices you know, my 86 year old dad says it should be a choice. If, if I want to go out without a mask, I'm going to go out without a mask. Yes. If I'm afraid I'm going to die, I'm going to stay home. Yes. Right. This is all yep. choices. Yes. 100% agree. And I don't ever want to be somebody who tries to minimize somebody's fear or pain or anguish. That's not what this is about. If it's new, yeah, it's going to kill people. It's just what it's going to do. Anything new is going to do that. But. But to shut down the world's greatest economy, when it was peaking, mind you, we were just roaring, Yeah, yeah. is a knee-jerk reaction to gain control. Yes. For sure. You know, and, and that's what I felt the whole thing is about the entire time was to see how easy it is to um, control people. Mm. And they did, they did a great job. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta give them props, right? <laughs> they did. They did a wonderful job, whatever the hell they were trying to do, you know. And uh, I, I've, you, know, you shouldn't break the law, but at the same time, I'm not going to let a tyrannical <laughs> governor put me out of business either. Absolutely. Well, it's, all, it's also not a law, right? This is an illegal mandate. It, it actually yes. is in violation. It stands in the face of our state constitution, 
stands in the face of our civil liberties. Um, I mean, and if you even take it down to local level, like, you know, you're a business owner, this is why we're all here. Um, you know, the whole OSHA bullshit that's going on. Um, they're in violation of their own standards no by it, forcing people to be in compliance to be chemically or you know carbon monoxide overload behind dioxide. these masks uh what did i say carbon monoxide sorry carbon dioxide. i'm so fra yeah, yeah. frazzled you're good. You're good. I, and good. anybody who's Those listening my dog they know what is that oh we got fusion masks okay okay <laughs> yeah Just, so sorry. marketing in the grocery store there you go there you go but 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 yeah 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 no megan but you were you got such a valid point you know like like uh we're enforcing people to wear masks especially when they're exercising like what the hell is that like that is the most diabolical thing ever like even like there was periods of time megan can you hear us yeah uh, yeah oh, cut okay. out for a bit i got you i got you now. okay okay um yep. but yeah you know like there was a period of time where our gym was partially open right way back in the day and like yeah. you're seeing people these people who are like into fitness like these people who are very health conscious and they're in there like wearing these like face smothering masks dude i'm like what are you doing like on the stair step or like running on the treadmill i'm like you're just killing yourself yeah. killing yourself and and you know we have been talking about this exhaustively week in and week out for almost a year now you know just uh and 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 it's so obvious to us but it's so painfully it's painful to watch other people just continue to fall for it you know and 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 what you're doing is just uh you know we we try to do our part to be heroic but i think what you're doing is absolutely the the solution it is the solution to how we get out of this you know and I mean, so we this this could all be over if all the business owners would just open their businesses yep. and we would go to those businesses and put our put our money where our mouth is at the same time if we'd stop going to to amazon and yep. walmart and, and all these places and supporting these local businesses that are 100%. willing to stand up for our rights yep. like that's that's exactly what we need to be doing so so how is your business doing now Chris, since, since you decided to open when, despite these mandates and, and whatnot? Well, instantly, when it all came down, you know, I probably immediately lost about a third of my membership just due to fear mongering, the unknown. I mean, and you know, I can't I can't blame people for you know, wigging out a little bit. I mean, I get it. It was they really tried to scare the hell out of us of this, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, um, and some people are still afraid to come out of their house. It's it's incredible. Um, but uh, out of that third, I'd say half of them, I mean, their contracts were up anyway. So if you want to go, you got to go. It's fine. You did what you said you were going to do. I'm not mad at you about it. Uh, the other half were people that had one and two year agreements with the gym and just said, piss on it. I ain't paying you no more, mm. you know, and, and they still went out and did everything they were going to do. They just used it as an excuse to not pay their gym dues anymore, which is that hurt. That stings. You know, that was thousands of dollars. And uh, so, you know, from there, we've just been trudging back, trudging back, trudging back. And then lately, um, because like my, I, I was just going to stay open to be like super, like kind of under the radar guy. Yeah. And just be quiet about it. And yeah, something happened. I forget what it was. It just pissed me off. And, uh, I just, I just said, you know, the hell with it. And I, the very day the second mandate came out, like the second, don't do anything. Yeah. The very next day, I put my TV commercial on TV. Uh, I, uh, I started doing internet stuff like Facebook and the gram and all the stuff I'm not good at because I'm a technology idiot. And uh, I, uh, I just started just promoting the Am I you, can you can curse. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I mean, you're good. Whew. Yeah. You're good. Go for it. I started promoting the shit out of my business. I was going to die. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I didn't get into business to be put out of business. Yeah, sure. Right. You know, if I don't do my job right and we go out of business, that's on me. Yeah. Right. If I, if I just do a shitty job at my job, I don't deserve to have my job. Just like if I work for somebody else and I do a shitty job, I don't deserve to have my job. Yeah. Right. Right. I work for my clients. Yeah. I work for my three-year-old son. I work for his mom. Um, I work, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I work for everybody around me, you know, yeah. and I'm not going to let any of those people down. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not like I pulled this magical wad of money out of my wallet and opened a new business. I had to go get money for that. Yeah. I don't want to not pay somebody I owe money to, you know, it's, it's a thing. And, and, you know, the, 
the, the, the, the pain people with stimulus is great. Good for them. Whatever. Um, I got my 1200 bucks. I never got my 600 bucks, mm. but I really don't care about that. I don't care. I don't care. Um, you know, if you need it, good, good for you. Do I need it? Sure. Do I care if I get it? No. Mm-hmm. Well, we would have done better if they just let us work. I mean, that's Absolutely. the point. Yeah, that was a slap the in the thing. face yeah. because it was a $600 or $1,200. Just shut up and take your government cheese and go home and don't pay your rent. And we're going to just yep. let everyone go under. That's the whole point. We're going to collapse the economy. We're going to put everyone in the middle out. Of course, Walmart yep. still thrives. Of course, Home Depot still thrives. Of well, course, Amazon is, you know, uh, you know, we won't. And so this, this gets so dark. But that mm-hmm. was the whole point was to yep. obliterate business um, on Every- top of obliterating morale to make sure that we were dehumanized so that you in know this, this is such a deep exactly and that and that adds in to the whole point you know taking away our mental health taking away our physical health having us breathe this carbon dioxide while simultaneously trying to inject us with things that is going to alter our dna while you still are masked I mean, the whole thing is fraud this is fraud and tyranny this is treason to the Deepest level. It is crimes against humanity globally. And the mm-hmm. fact that we have some, you know, very few people, it seems like, and to find you standing up. And I I did go in and I said, by the way, everyone needs to come down and sign up uh, yes. at Core Fusion. I just signed up at Core Fusion. I want, I, you're going to tell us later, Chris, about all that you're doing down there. But um, to be able to walk in, like when I was talking to you and say, like, thank you for doing this genuinely, like, I have been a wreck, not being around people, not being able to be physical. Um, you know, I feel like that's what we need right now. Like we're, especially in Oregon, we're not out in the sunshine right now. We need to be moving. We need to be doing something to keep our spirits up, to keep our well being, to keep our health. Mm-hmm. And so to walk in and feel like, yeah, that's why I said to you, so this is like real life. This is like normal life before they took it away or before we mm-hmm. let them take it away, not you know, no, us right. necessarily at this table, but collectively, societally, that's exactly what happened. Um, and today, you know, it's like the whole thing, you got to support the businesses that want to also support your freedom and your sovereignty too. I went to a yes. store today that yes. my little boy was asking and begging for a week, please, 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 mommy, can we go? It's a special rock store. He wanted to go so bad. And it's just been a hell week. And I didn't think we were going to make it. And I found a little bit of time of the day we went over there. I was already stressed and worried. And the minute I walked in, one person had a mask on and two didn't. So I was like, great. Oh, I was so thrilled. Yes. The rock store of my little boy's dreams is not going to require us to mask. And as soon as I walked in, I said, so great. You guys don't require masks. And the girl quick grabs a ma- the lady, grabs a mask and puts it on. And she says, oh, no, you need to be masked to be in here. And, um, and then I had the other employee come right up to me. So I'm already, I'm irritated because I'm thinking, well, you didn't have to have it on when you were standing in here with other people until I walked in. Her employee is wearing a Black Lives Matter uh, face mask. And I pull my mask up and I covered it. I covered it over my nostrils, but not all the way up to where your face is all the way gone. And she told me that wasn't good enough. I needed to pull it up higher. Oh, wow. Um, and so I said, Did you tell I her said, to I kick need- rocks. <laughs> 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 it was it was bad. My my fourteen year old daughter was standing there holding her ears. It got bad. So I just said I that's, started that's off. When you with, don't know who you're messing with. Yeah. It was. I, I was or listen. I I was already a wreck today. We all know this. So I was just like it, this was the last straw. And I was just like looking at his face, like really. So now she's got a daughter that's my nine year old, almost nine year old's age, walking around the store without a mask on, and that was fine. But my kids had to be masked. And I said, I said, I don't understand. I said, why are you literally harassing me? I said, she wasn't wearing a mask. That little girl's not wearing a mask, and my nostrils and mouth are covered. What's wrong? She goes, no, it needs to be up higher. So then the owner says to me, well, we just had OSHA in here. And I'm thinking, then why was your fucking mask off your face when I walked in? If you were so worried, because you're, they had another customer on the couch and they're un, like, it was just so blatant. It's yeah. not real. So all this to say, I spent $39 in rocks in her store, oh. but I had planned to spend 150 and I'll never fucking go back. So she doesn't get my money. She's not getting any more of my business and I won't recommend her shop. She yeah. wasn't even practicing what she preached. And she was going to alienate me when I was, you know, that was not customer. So that shit yeah. pisses me off. I'm not okay with any of it. So again, walking into the gym back to on point, 
was so wonderful and seeing the success stories coming out of your gym, seeing these people transform themselves and being committed and this, the, the camaraderie that's going on in there is I'm thirsty for it, Chris. Yeah. yeah. And Chris, I would ask, you know, I mean, it's because the mass media would have us think right now, if, if you're having a gym where that is open during a lockdown and that there's maybe people aren't all wearing masks, you know, are, do you have a big super spreader event in there? Is everybody getting COVID and falling over or, or do we have people actually getting healthy? We remain at zero transmissions. Yes. Um, you know, it's uh, again, it's like I said, in the beginning, it's about choices. Yeah. People well, come in, they, they come in, they sign up. And they're like, Oh, do I have to wear a mask? I said, this, this is the last bastion of American freedom in this city. You do whatever you want. Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, exactly. yeah, and and yeah, is it is it right or wrong? It doesn't matter. It's right or wrong. It's choice. That's correct. It's you know, sovereignty. And, it's free will. If your mask is going to keep you safe, you don't need to worry about what's on my face. If my mask and your mask keeps you extra safe, you can wear mine too. But I'm not wearing one yeah. for you. I don't. I don't acquiesce. I'm not okay. I'm not. My children will never ever again probably see the inside of a school a schoolroom my children are not going to be mad. This is not going to be their reality. Um, and to be offered something, like I say, it's just, it's, it's so thrilling. And you offer such an array of stuff. Yeah. Chris. I, th I think, I think this is a really good time. You know, oh. we're 15 minutes into the episode, but I really want to give you an opportunity, Chris, to tell us all the stuff you're doing down there. Tell us what you got going on. We really only offer one thing results. That's awesome. it. There's a litany of ways to get those results. But um, I have my uh, my studio, which is the Core Fusion Studio, right? And that is where we have all the boot camps. I, I run uh, two CrossFit style classes a day. They're called Velocity. Uh, they're a little different, a um, little bit more Olympic lifting based, uh, and less of the uh, the metabolic resistance conditioning based of all my other classes. I have a 24 hour weight room on the other side of my little gym. Um, and literally, because, you know, I have a guy who's who's going to install my key fob system right now, you know, so we can do little magnetic keys. But right now I have like 85 keys to my building out. Like, here's a yeah. key. Yeah. Here's a key. I, I uh, happily have one on my key ring. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I mean, I'm all cameraed up and everything, so I can make sure people are safe and do what they need to do. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just... I offer customized menu planning, body composition. Um, I'll write you customized programming for the weight room if you want. I don't mind. It's all available under the umbrella of what we do. Um, I say we. I'm the only actual person who works there. Of what I do, um, I just don't like using the word I because it sounds like mm. I have an ego when I try not to have an ego. I try to be pretty ego-free, yeah. um, which is hard in fitness. Um, everybody has such big egos in what I do. It's, it's Sometimes it's even embarrassing. Um, you know, you hear the eye so many times. It's like listen to an Obama speech. It's terrible. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, yeah. we can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just like, oh, God, kill us. No, kill us now. Yeah. Man. Uh, you know, it's what, what we do is we bring a, a very positive atmosphere, a lot of fun. I mean, tonight we had all the disco lights on, we were partying in the dark. Uh, it was, it was bananas. I mean, it's, 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 it's always fun. Um, I'm it's always, always, oh, sorry to interrupt you. I'm always hooting and hollering and shouting and I dance way too much. Cause I am just an idiot. Uh, I gotta have fun too. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's very fun and light atmosphere, but I'm very strict about certain things, form, function, range of motion, um, working hard when you're there. I want 110% out of you every time. Um, I want to make sure that, that I'm creating that walking billboard that goes out and people see that, like, I want to do that. I want to do what you're doing. Cause you look amazing, you know, or you're so healthy. You can run whatever, you know, I want to be the person who puts that stuff out there. I've been doing this on, on my own since 2009. I've, I've, I've run my own fitness companies. Awesome. At one point, have you guys lived in the area for a while? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, from here. So in 2009, I started uh, the Michaelis Boot Camp, and it was the uh, 
the largest single location boot camp at the time probably ever seen at about 700 members all boot camping in this 10,000 square foot gymnasium. And uh, it was, you couldn't go anywhere and not see my swag, my car stickers. And I'm trying to do that again. Um, the medium in fitness has changed a lot. I mean, people really want that prissy bullshit. They get at these $160 a month studios. Who in the fuck pays $160 a month to stand under orange, stupid lights and be told what zone they need to work in. No, I refuse. <laughs> Who in the fuck? And Not us. Not it's, us. It's the stupidest <laughs> shit, you guys. I'm telling you. Three months at that particular place or the the fake functional place up the road from them or the, the on-fire boot camp over by Crescent Village, whatever the hell it's called. Um, they all, their unlimited programs are all 150 a month or more insane you are pricing people out of fitness that is why i'm 40 bucks a month yeah unlimited classes 24 hours 40 bucks a month would you hours. like meal planning it's only 20 bucks a month for me to do your menu planning yeah 20 wow. bucks a month to be taught how to eat right and not just tell you and give you my favorite as trainers at, at, at some places well here's a list of foods you can eat <laughs> have at it that does shit yeah. that's nothing yeah. I write you seven days of customized menu planning based upon your goals and the caloric intake you need, as well as the macro and micronutrients supplement recommendation. Cause you are going to have shortfalls. You got to supplement that. You got to get stuff. Um, I want to give you everything for that extra 20 bucks a month. And I make it so goddamn cheap that you can still go out and afford your goddamn groceries. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's perfect. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Man, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's a, yeah, man. Oh, you got, you got it, man. You've got it. And I, I, I just, uh, I really hope that our people come and support you. I really hope everybody here in the Eugene Springfield area here in Oregon come and support you. If you guys are out there in the world. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you have any sort of like crowdfunding going on anything? Like go get funding or anything? Go. No, I always, I always feel weird about that. Yeah, I feel you. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. uh, it's like I made these shirts, right? I don't know if you can read I that. Was going to bring I was that just up. about to ask you to tell us about that shirt that I love. So this is the official Fuck Kate Brown t-shirt. Yes. Uh, yes. It, is, it is modeled after the original NWO t-shirt. There you go. From the uh, late 90s. And um, I made it just... Totally just for me and like 11 other people at the gym who saw me wearing mine. Yeah. And everywhere I go, we I, I, will, I will wear yes. this anywhere. Sure. As long as I'm not with my kiddo, I'll wear yeah. it anywhere. Um, and, and people are like, dude, where'd you get that shirt? Can I get one of those shirts? Yep. I asked him to give me his number. I said, when you order more, call me. Um, <laughs> I really want to put them out there just for sale and just see you what the hell it. happens. You should do it. Sure. Uh, Absolutely. But I mean, I don't need any more death threats. I get it. I've had enough in the last eight weeks to, uh, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. That's another thing I was going to ask about. So, uh, for one, like what kind of repercussions have you had from the state? Has OSHA come at you yet? The state come at you? And then two, you know what? I know that, uh, you know, there's some pretty violent, angry, very lost people out there that are just 86. representing Yeah, 86 Eugene. I know it's like a Twitter, uh, Instagram page that uh, highlights like local businesses that are defying COVID orders and stuff. And like, so well, you the, ben, the, I just to be fair no. about that, that, that 86, that is bullshit. That yeah. Eugene, dog, oh, yeah. that is total bullshit. That's the enemy of everything that yeah. we all stand for. Oh, and I that's what I'm talking know about. Yes. People, I know yeah. people in businesses that they're yeah. doxing on that, that they're straight trying to ruin good people. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, so it's because of the sovereignty, but anyways, it's, it's okay. bizarre. We're back. So, uh, to answer your question about the state, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they one of my best friend's wives turned me into the state. Wow. I couldn't believe that. One of my best friend's wives in this email. Well, if I'm ever your respiratory therapist, and I'm thinking to myself, if you are my respiratory therapist, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh, God. Who in the fuck does that to their to someone you know? Yeah, that's insane. I never do that to somebody I know or anybody I don't know because I'm not a dick. Yeah. But I mean, so in the beginning, I got I got three 
three emails sent to me from OSHA. And finally, I, I, I ran it up the... I ran up the chain to uh, to the regional guy, who I really like. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. All of my interactions with these people was very professional, very classy. They were very nice to me. I was very polite back. Um, I can't say that I ever had cross words with any of the people from the OHA. Um, the second it got a little heated, the lady's like, you know what? You need to call this guy. And, uh, and, and, and talk it out with him. And that's exactly what I did. And it was great actually. Um, and we had a really long conversation, uh, one day on the telephone and, and basically, you know, he, he ran down kind of the lay of the land for me as far as, let's just say he was very honest, which you don't expect, right? You don't, you expect them to try to fuck you because that's what the state of Oregon always does. It's just totally fuck you. But he told me, he's like, dude, we think this is just as stupid as you do. We're just doing the job wow. we're told to do. Um, and like I said, he was a cool dude. I liked him. I'd go have a beer with him right now because he was he was, he was was okie dokie. You could definitely tell he's only doing the job he's told to do. Yeah. Right? And he, he needs to get his paycheck too. And that's what I told him. I said, I'm not going to stop. I said, I don't give a shit what you do, how many emails you send, who you send in, I'll send them right back out. Um, and I told him at the end, I said, basically what it boils down to is something my dad told me when I was a little kid. And that is don't pick a fist fight with an ugly person because they got nothing to lose. And, and I, I got nothing to lose. This is a zero sum game for me. I'm all in. And basically, you know, what I talked to the lady about was, I said, just put something in my file that says not to bother me because I'm not going to stop. And she says, well, let's run it up the, run it up the pole to, to – I'm not going to use names because, yeah. like I said, you guys want to date me. Uh, run it up the, up the pole to him and see what happens, and they did that. Uh, we had our conversation. I haven't heard jack shit in a long time. Wow. And That's I've been awesome. pretty public. I mean, I have yeah. been very public about what I'm doing, yeah. and I haven't heard anything. That's amazing. So, um, but but I didn't go at him either. I wasn't like, no, fuck you. It wasn't like that. Sure. It was a very cordial conversation okay. among two professionals who have to play on different sides. Yeah. Um, and and I worried about it. Now, don't get me wrong. I haven't checked my fucking mailbox in about three months either. So <laughs> there could be all kinds of shit in there. Yeah. But I have to think if if, if, if if something got levied at me, it would hit the internet because that shit's pretty public. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was uh, it was a very matter-of-fact conversation. And at the, end, at the end of it, you can't bleed a fucking turnip. Yeah. What are you going to do? Find me for fucking money I don't have yet because you fucked me out of it in the beginning? Yeah. Right. You know, and now I'm in a position where, dude, I'm clawing and scratching every day to survive. Yeah. I know exactly how many members I need by the end of March. If I don't get it, we're fucked. So, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I, I, but I'm honest with my members about it too. I wrote it up on the great big board. I said, this is what it is. Yeah. Got friends fucking bring it on. Don't yeah. make me Eugene's best kept secret. That's not what I want. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. um, I want people to have an outlet to be healthy, but on the same, the same token, guys like me, fuck, uh, fucking Rena, uh, Nick, and the guys that stayed open in Springfield. Uh, um, again, I don't want to use their name. <laughs> well, fucking wrong. They know who they are. The Forever Strong people. We all stayed open. We all said fuck it. And we all stayed open. It wasn't just me. I mean, I'm not alone, right? I, I just am a little bit louder about it. I guess. Uh, I had I had no idea. I had heard no about idea. Rena, but I had no idea about any any of those. I'm actually friends with someone who used to be at Forever. I think he probably still mm-hmm. is, and he hasn't said a word about them being open. Well, that's, that's bizarre. But anyway, so normal. that's that said. That said, but, it, but, it has it, been a quiet it's, thing, and 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 uh, you know, all these other gyms, they've taken their first or second or third round of PPP, fired all their fucking employees, and kept the money. You know, nice scumbaggy thing to do. Honestly, you know, we're all opening back up. I don't think they deserve their fucking members back. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right. 
Go to yep. a fucking gym that was open for his people. Go to a gym that gave a shit enough to risk their bullshit so that you had a place to go. And, and I think there's a Agreed. whole other point there, too, though, that is, I mean, you know, the gym that's right down the street from me just is reopening tomorrow. But but they have followed the Kate Brown's orders to the T. Right. Mm-hmm. So so I know in the fall when they shut this shit down again, which I, oh, I yeah. guarantee you they're going to do it when when the flu season or the what well, COVID season, we'll call it now, comes off again. You know, they're going to shut that gym. They're going to shut it. And so I, I, I it does come down to put your money where your mouth is. Support the people that, that stand for your freedom and, and for your liberty. And 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 we'll and you'll get to work out through that. Because I think, you know, for me. I have not been working out. This is the longest I've gone without working out in probably my adult life. And, and it's driving me fucking crazy. And uh, I want to make that commitment. And I want to, I want to get in there and, and get my muscle back, man. And, and, and feel I'll, come at, I'll come with you, Ed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, well, I'll make it. Cause, cause you do. Cause Chris, know, you start guys. classes at like 5.00 AM, right? Your class. 5.00 AM. 5.00 AM. Friday. Yeah, no excuses there, huh? That's what I'm saying. So we can always <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to figure it out, but yeah, I'm making a commitment. I'm going to, I'm going to come join Chris. So uh, I'll, I'll be there within the next week when I can find some time. What, when can I f- come find you? Do you Just have Monday to Friday? Okay. Yeah. I leave early on Wednesdays cause I have my son. Um, and then every other Friday I leave early cause uh, him and I party like it's 1999 uh, and pretty much trash my apartment for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, um, but you know, the, uh, the, the, the people backlash was a shittier one. Yeah. I mean, the, the state was a state alphabet soup. We had a conversation and that was that. Um, but man, I had people following me in my car. I mean, I, you guys haven't seen me. I'm not like a little dude. Yeah. Right. right. I'm like five foot 10, I'm 243 pounds. I have abs. I mean, I'm kind yeah. of big. I'm a little scary looking. I wouldn't fucking follow me around. <laughs> and, right. And I open carry almost everywhere I go. So, I mean, I really wouldn't fucking follow somebody yeah. as unstable as I might be or might not be around. I'm <laughs> just joking. Yeah, no. Sure, yeah, sure. But like people but, don't know who they're walking up to. That's the whole point. Yeah. They don't just know. Like who the, just like the people no. in the rock store didn't know who they were fucking with. Yeah. Oh, shit. But man, yeah. I had people fucking walk, follow me to my car, try to follow me home in their cars. Are you fucking serious? I mean, were they so worried about catching COVID from you that they followed you? That makes perfect sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. I turn and I turn and fake cough somebody. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know yeah, what that is? You know what that determined that is? That's their white privilege right there. Right. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I Check banned the shit. use of that phrase. I, I both see that. That's funny. You flip the script on him. It's like only only somebody with white privilege would walk up onto some gigantic dude with a freaking pistol. <laughs> like that's that's your white privilege. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, and of course the fucking death threats and the stupid bullshit i live People in fucking- threatening you they were threatening your life because you wouldn't close your business because i kept it open holy shit but okay, i mean did you it- ever report it didn't i'm just curious how if, if you told eugene pd and if so how they handled that i ain't gonna waste their time with that shit i got okay. too many friends i got too many friends that are cops that are being told other things they're not allowed to go do you know, believe me, the actual cop cops, the actual police, the policemen and police women, they want to be able to do their whole job. Everybody I've talked to, yeah, they, they love it if they could actually do what they were trained to do. But our mayor in Eugene is like, oh, no, better not. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had a couple of good run ins with the uh, the former mayor, uh, Kitty. Uh, so <laughs> you guys got time for a story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. We're, we're down. Okay. I fucking love this. So originally when I, when I, when I quit working for gold's gym, because my checks would never cash, I, uh, I quit and I opened up my own facility inside the old U S sportsplex over by Walmart. Right. Okay. And uh, John, the owner had just pulled the building back out of bankruptcy and he had a guy named Tony in there who had a skate park. It was pretty neat. It was a little weird, but it was neat. And um, so I went there and made a deal and I was trying to grow this little business. Right. And it kept growing and growing, but people were getting freaked out. Cars are getting broken into in the parking lot because of all the bum shits that live over there. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. it's like the field of dreams for drug addicts. I mean, it's oh, just, man. it's everywhere. And um, so 
one day, one of them, it was like the first time they ever just dumped all their shit out, right? Like trash, trash, trash upon trash. And so they, they left it on our, our property, right? Our easement sidewalk on the back corner. So I called the city and I said, okay, I called non-emergency number. Sure. And I said, okay, this happened. It was illegally dumped on our property. You know, do you guys have somebody that's full of needles and shit? I mean, I own the property, but it was, you know, the city not doing what they're supposed to do that let it happen. Yeah. And they're like, well, no, you know, we don't really have anybody that comes and does that unless it's on the street. I said, well, if I push it onto the street, they're like, well, then you would be illegally dumping. I'm like, you got to oh, be shit. Oh, wow. So uh, I go to Kitty Piercy's Facebook page and, uh, and I, I put her on blast. And I said, look, just because you've got a kid who's a junkie doesn't mean that you can leave these people out here to ruin our fucking business. Clean this shit up. And within like two or three minutes, I had a phone call from Pete Kearns, just like a lickety split. Hey, Chris, what's going on? And me and me and Pete knew each other from some functions. And uh, I was like, I was like, what, what do you mean? He's like, well, uh, the mayor's office called me. And said, wow. said, said you want to toss something out there on Facebook that was a little aggressive. I said, well, come on out. Let me show you what's going on. He's cool enough to come out and did the walk. Told him what was going on. He was just as shocked as everybody else. And, um, you know, it was, it was around that time. It was explained to me that they're not allowed to get rid of the illegal camping. They're not allowed to get rid of the illegal vehicles because the mayor and the city council say so. And, you know, the, the police force is beholden to what they're told to do by the city. It's just, it's the unfortunate reality of the way that it is. And, um, yeah, that's why everybody gives the cops shit. The, the cops in this town are fucking great. They are a fucking hoot. I've everyone I've ever hung out or talked with, the ones that have been clients, they've all been amazing. Yeah. Right? Um, their spouses, all been amazing. And um then <laughs> we have this nice long talk, and it says, So, you know, any chance you go on there and <laughs> take down that post? <laughs> I was like, Fuck no, that shit's staying right. <laughs> that shit's yeah. staying right up there. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. It was uh it was it was very I mean, that's the kind of shit that aside from all the bullshit that we have right now, all the other shit that small businesses have to deal with in this town. Yeah. I mean it's it's and I can't speak for other businesses because I'm not them, but I have a feeling that the majority of the other business owners that are like me, small businesses less than 20 employees yeah. of, or like me and have zero, you know, uh, it's already hard enough. Right. But I have to, I have to, I have to kick homeless people out from the front of my doors two, three days a week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, it's not like my shopping center is who ha super nice. Yeah. You know, I'm not out there on Cobra road. I'm out there in, you know, blue collar Eugene. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm chasing homeless people all over the place to get out of there. Yeah, I know it sucks outside. You know, I, I mean, it's not warm. It's not dry. You know, we had a dude today asking for food outside of the gym. I gave him a box of protein bars and a blanket. And I said, just go anywhere but here. Yeah. You know, just, ah, because it, it freaks people out. It, it costs the businesses money. Sure. sure. You know what I mean? And and I, I, I believe in a town, because Eugene's not a big city. Yeah. It's like a, a big town. And you can't have things like that just openly affecting your local economy because where I have ties to this city, I've been here almost my whole life. Yeah. Other people don't. They'll just pick up their shit and go to Springfield. Yeah, you, know? you say that like, Springfield. I mean, I live in Springfield and it is night and day. I mean, there we don't yep. have ten cities. They're not yep. everywhere. You know, I mean, and Springfield has its own issues, but the, you know, they're. I don't have to walk through, you know, you know, where I could step on a needle and there's possible feces and like, yep. I mean, there's, it is bad in Eugene right now. There are just, it's I mean, it's, yeah, all it's all over. And, but you say it's not just because we're a small town though, but, but Portland is maybe the only place worse than Eugene I've seen. Like that, yeah. half of Portland is just like a tent city right now. Like it's I gross. Won't, I won't even go. Yeah. We, we went to, to go see a comedian a few months back and it was yeah. just, it was, uh, it was bad. disgusting. Yeah. 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 I, 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 uh, 
it's it's a it's it's a disservice to the tax paying citizens of the city that 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 pay for beautification the taxes pay for schools they pay for police they pay for all these things and all these things are mechanisms to keep that shit away yeah and when you when you don't keep it away it it fucks up the balance of everything yeah certainly certainly and and when and when you lose balance you know typically you fall down before you get back up and it's it's just an unfortunate reality of 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 where we live in the time that we live in. Yeah, certainly. You know, certainly. Uh, I, I I champion the small businesses that stayed open like I did, like Trudy's, fucking yeah, awesome. Trudy's. You know, and I know they got hit with fines the other day, and I hope they don't pay them. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, the, that one out in Florence got smacked with another eighteen thousand bucks. Uh, the courthouse in Salem's got hit twice. The first time for ninety thousand, which they appealed and got rid of. The second one for one hundred twenty-six thousand for their four gyms remaining open. And um, I don't know what's come of that. Uh, I'm sure they'll appeal them again. They'll probably get dropped because they know that they can't. You can't collect this money. It's it's not. Well, plus it's astronomical amounts. It's not, it's not human doable, especially with small businesses. It's, it's, it's absolutely absurd. And I, I don't understand the whole legality behind like business operation. What happens if you get like, so theoretically, like if Trudy's was getting fined, like, you know, whatever it was 500 a day. And then it was like, what, what, what ended up being it's 8,500 a day. Like it just kept going. I don't even remember what the numbers were, but like, like, so let's say as a business owner, she were to rip those up and just say, fuck you and just keep coming to work every day. And she just keeps opening opening her doors like are they gonna i guess in the end do they send the police and the national garden to bar her doors because it seems to me like i mean the government has completely taken all control from the people and they completely mismanage every single thing and except for a very small fraction of good local politicians throughout the country for the most part all levels of government have been corrupted and perverted from city council on up and that was how they were able to push through this pandemic new world order agenda on a global scale because they have everybody bought for the last 20 years and they work people into these positions um sorry what were we just saying because i i sometimes lose my train of thought championing small businesses yeah, yeah. Um, championing small businesses yeah. i mean like certainly Trudy. we we've oh, made a commitment I, oh no yeah, like so on. what would happen so what would happen like so if you kept getting fined and you weren't paying it and you didn't go I to talked court. To my, I talked to my landlord about this very thing because most of us have um, our businesses are in shopping centers, yeah. right? Or right. buildings owned by not us. Sure. Okay. <laughs> right? I don't own the mall. I don't own these buildings that I'm in. Right. And so I called my landlord because guess what? Rents do, right? It's not that <laughs> they, they know breaks. You know, and uh, it's not like people's houses where you ain't got to pay because the government says so. We all have to, every business had to keep paying unless, you know, you made a deal. But um, I said, hey, man, I'm doing this thing just so you know, because uh, cause I'm going to survive. To which his response, because he's awesome, was like, fuck yeah. You know, like, woo. The thing is, is that all these places are fucking on private property. Right? Yeah. Like, my business is on private property. Yeah. So I, I asked her, I said, so if, you know, if, if the city calls to say, you need to shut me down, are you guys going to let me stay open? He's like, fuck yeah, fuck them. Rents. And then he says, rents do. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, 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 I mean, uh, you know, the, the landlords are in just as shitty a position as everybody exactly. else. Exactly. You know, so, and again, it's about the commitments you make. It's about the commitment you make. I made a commitment to pay X amount of dollars over X amount of time to this person or this place. Right? No matter what, it is my job unequivocally to make that shit happen. Right? Mm -hmm. Just like my members. My members didn't have to take a shit on me. They could have easily been like, hey, we're really freaked out about this thing. Can you like freeze us until it's not scary anymore? <laughs> Fuck, I'd love to. Fuck, why not? Right? Yeah. Of course I would do that. I offered that 
to anybody who needed it. Yeah. Right. And some people took me up on it. You know, I'll freeze it for two or three months till the shit goes away. And then after two or three months, and they're still scared to leave their house. I extended the shit. Yeah. Right. Yes, dude. If you're afraid to leave your house, you know, at that time I was still doing shit online every day, videos, texting workouts to small groups of people. I mean, just putting it out there every way with Sunday, making sure that services were available. That was the big thing. Services yeah. being available. Um, you know, some gyms in New York just kept charging their members and didn't do nothing. There are gyms in yeah. town that kept charging their members without offering anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. The first week that everything shut down, I recorded a whole bunch of workouts, worked my ass off. I wanted to make sure services were available so that I could service my clients. Yeah. Right. They, we have these things, phones. We have this thing called the internet where we can show you videos to do shit at home. Uh, there's trainers on Instagram making hundreds of thousand dollars a month doing that shit right now. Wow. I'm not pretty enough to do that or I would. Um, <laughs> definitely not your, uh, your, your typical, uh, you know, pretty guy, pretty boy trainer guy. That's for God. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's a whole nother topic we could talk about another day. Oh yeah. But, um, but you know, the gyms that just took your money, didn't offer you anything. Fucking shame on them. That's not cool. Certainly. But you know, offering something or when we were outside, Hey, services are available. Come mm-hmm. outside. Mm-hmm. We're back inside. Services are available. Your choice. You know, and I still did videos and I still send people a year later at home shit almost every day to do. Wow. Right? It's just, fuck. you know, I have one lady, she'll text me every morning and remind me because I will definitely forget. Wow. Uh, you know, there's not enough hours in a 15 hour work day to get everything done. So, wow. but no, it's, it's, it's about, you know, this whole thing is about being able to take care of your customers or your clients or whatever you have. Yeah. And, and nobody, not the government, not El Presidente, nobody should be able to force me to not be able to do my job. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, once the government comes in and takes over the dictates, see how businesses are run. Isn't that called fascism? Isn't that <laughs> yep. fascism? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Isn't that what I thought? Uh, I thought Trump was a fascist. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought Trump was a fascist. What's going on here? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So have you, you guys been, you guys have been watching mainstream media. I can <laughs> so tell. You mean, you mean these, these anti, TV, anti-fascista guys. people that are probably attacking you outside of your plane are actually defending fascism wow who would have thought amazing Amazing. i don't know it's it's fucking crazy though yeah Yeah. um if nothing else mainstream media is the most entertaining shit oh man i I can't handle it It i can't look at it insane yeah Yeah. it's it's just an entertaining shit show to me yeah yeah Yeah. gave us this lane to be in though yeah yeah if they they weren't gonna do such a horrible job we wouldn't have a platform so there you go there you go (laughs) i would say true words yeah to, to anyone who's actually is scared about this virus that's supposedly wreaking the havoc that the media claims. And, you know, we'll give, we'll give it credit. There's, there's a virus. It's doing something. It's probably there. I mean, we have lots of evidence of um, the numbers being doctored at every single level, but at the same time, if you are worried about your health, the things you should be doing are working your body out. Eating Without a healthy, mask. You shouldn't be you know, breathing your carbon dioxide. Sunshine. Don't have a mask on your face. And that, I mean, that's, that's what we're don't trying take to take a do. vaccine. Yeah. Don't take a vaccine. Are you serious? For yeah, sure. Yeah. So it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Oh my gosh, Chris, man. Thank you so much, man, for spending time with us, breaking this all down, sharing your plight, your struggle, man. That is so infuriating that you've had to deal with all this just because of this contrived situation, man. Like we have all the utmost respect for you. Maybe we'll bring you back here for an update. Um, I really hope. Yeah, you know, I will always, I love this kind of platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just something I've been wanting to get into. Just Please do. Absolutely. I talk, I talk, I talk all fucking day. Dude, so, you absolutely should. It's for uh, sure. You know, I, uh, I believe, I believe in, in real freedom. Yep. I don't believe in this. I don't get me wrong. I mean, the overall, I mean, the overall cost of freedom is death. I mean, let's think about this on the True. overall, but you know, um, it's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't believe in and having to have a plan B, I think plan B is yeah. for quitters. There you go. Right? Take your plan A and ride that son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, and stop hoping for shit. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, just do shit. Hope yep. is just another word for delayed disappointment. Okay. Yeah. Shit off. Just fucking go for it. Go on yeah, life. Yeah. Live. Be healthy. Fucking love your family. Take care of your kids. Yeah. Keep a job. Get off of fucking unemployment. Go do some shit. Create something. Fucking create something. Yes. yes. Okay. Absolutely. If nothing else, if there's one good thing that could absolutely come out of unemployment is it gives you a little bit of steady income to go out and create something you can mm-hmm. do on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, just, I mean, come into core fusion, come work out. Let me beat you up a little bit. You will yeah. like it. Cause all we do yeah. is who holler and talk shit. Yeah. The same way talking on this podcast is exactly how I talk in that place. Yes. I just say weird shit. Uh, I mean, it's like, I see 150 people a day, maybe. And <laughs> in almost every class, the conversation goes right to the toilet. It's amazing. It's great. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Um, we are 91% women. That is uh, men. I'm pretty sure men are afraid of my program. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's hard guys. I mean, I, I am the first to admit that uh, men are definitely the weaker sex. Mm. And I have, <laughs> I have irrefutable evidence every day in my shop. Okay. Now I got to go. Well, it, it's wrong. funny. I, w- I walked into your shop one day and uh, there was one guy in there. You were, you were away and we're coming back. And then, he, he told me the same thing. He says, you got to do, it's all about these classes. You got to do these classes, but the women, the women will kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that must've been Josh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, he's one of my guys who just goes in there and bangs out weights. Yeah. And uh, yes, the, uh, the women in those classes, it's, it's so amazing to, I, Great seeing story. some of their results, seeing some like where they started with you and that they've just <sighs> persevered and stay dedicated to their path and their journey. They're absolute rock stars. It's so well, those, inspiring. Those photos that I, that I sent you, uh-huh. that was an 11 week transformation for both of them. Wow. Oh 11. my gosh. They get on my meal plan. They show up five days a week. They lift heavy shit. Their cardio is through the roof and they listen. They take what I tell them and they just fucking do it. So we, we do deadlift maxes. Well, not, not everybody, uh, but I have some people that just love to lift. And this one lady, uh, she's been lifting. She's been lifting for a while now and uh, not a long time. And she was doing a deadlift max and she maxed out at three Oh five. That's a hell wow. of a deadlift. Yeah. Wow. But the, the beauty here is that she has two eight inch titanium rods in her spine and eight screws. Wow. Oh. She has no business deadlifting, let alone 300 pounds. Yeah. But because she comes in and she does the work and she got over fear. Yeah. She got past fear. Yeah. And she said, fuck, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get strong as fuck. And because of that, her quality of life is way better. And she's able to do things without pain. Yeah. That's because yeah. she's inflicted some pain on herself to get there. Yeah. But yeah. she's there. And she shows up four or five days a week. It's amazing. That's great. Uh, but anyway, guys, I appreciate you having me on Dude. talking about my stuff. So uh, great. Tell us one I more time. Plug everything one more time. Let us know where they can find you. Give us an address, phone number, any social media, online, everything. Cool. How do we find you? All right, guys. If you want more information about what I do, uh, you can go to the uh, the Core Fusion Fitness Facebook page. You can check me out at uh, corefusionfitnessugene.com. Um, it's a website. I think uh, um, then from there, uh, 2031 river road, core fusion fitness, we kick ass, we take names. And most of all, if you show up, if you do the work, I will absolutely guarantee your results hundred percent of the time. Awesome. Uh, yes. Support local businesses, but most yeah. of all support local businesses that supported you when nobody else would. They deserve Absolutely, it. absolutely right. deserve it. All right. So, Absolutely. You got it, man. We're going to put this out on all our platforms. We've got a local, a lot of local little telegram groups that we're involved in. We're going to blast it out on those. We're going to put, make sure. Yeah. And eventually when you get your new supply of fuck K Brown shirts, we're yeah, going to get, we'll, some we'll those sell too. those for you too. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. So Chris, thank you so much, brother. Uh, thank we will you, Chris. definitely, definitely see you thank soon. You okay. For sure. Love it. All thank right. you so, so much. Thanks. 
Wow, yeah. man. That was awesome, dude. That was a wealth of information, but yeah. like more importantly, just a, a local business order standing up against tyranny, which yeah. we have to support. 100%. You have to support that. And, and I think for me, the big point is, is that, uh, you know, and he said it, you know, we need to support the people that didn't close down, right? Yep. That, have, yes. that have been here this this whole time. We're, we're at this interesting junction where our some of our gyms are starting to open again, but we right. know that they will close as soon as Kate Brown tells them to. Yeah. As soon as the, the tyrannical overlords say, do this, they will do it. And we need the, to stand up for the businesses who are standing up for our rights and doing it when, when we need it, because we need to be in the gyms all the time. We don't need to do it when they say it's okay. And, and, and so, oh, sorry, Ed. No, no. I just, I just, I feel like, I feel like it's, this is a vote for your, with your wallet kind of situation where Absolutely. we need, we need to support the people that are supporting us. Absolutely. Uh, and further, I, I, I think it's worth mentioning all the gyms that are reopening and everyone's so excited about, they're all still fully masked. Totally. You're not really being supported. Yeah. You're not, there is no real sovereignty happening. Your civil liberties are still gone under some banner of bullshit safety. And the, and the sad thing is most of the gym owners are aware of that. Um, and so I, I agree fully that we need to support the people who have supported us. And, um, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't take very many people in this town or between the two towns to help his business to thrive. And I feel like, you know, if we can all come together and do that, you can come down and work out with Ed and Megan at Truzilla. Truzilla. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. Right. Dude, Truzilla workout. Like but totally, you know what? You could, you could message Whoa. us at Truzilla and say when you're going to go down and then yeah. like my schedule is pretty flexible. I can usually sure. like swing stuff and I'll meet you down there. And then we could like have like a community where we can, can be like freedom cells, but like at the gym. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could we could it. we could post on our premium or our Patreon, Freedom Patreon workouts. on our Patreon when we're going to be down at the gym. No, I'm just kidding. That's so that's so <laughs> egotistical. That's so dumb. Yeah. yeah. It's okay, but when I but when he gets me looking like those other women, we're going to bring the camera down to the gym and show all my deadlifting. So. <laughs> there you go. Hell yeah, I love it. I love it. But I, I do think there's also an overall point though. You know, um, where do you think you're going to get in better shape at the the gym that that closed down for six months or listening to, or at Chris's gym. And we just saw Chris and how fired up he is about working out. And uh, I can guarantee you if, if we're in his classes, we're going to, we're going to be feeling it at yes. least yeah. we'll be feeling it. So you can find his Facebook page and just like, look at, uh, look at these, fo these photos he's posting to people in his gym, yeah. the, the women in his gym. It's incredible. Like he's talking about these 11 week transformations. That is straight up what they are. It's the I'm kind down. of stuff that I like do the duck dot go like before and after women's like fitness photos, you know, and I'll like search it under images. Like there that's what he's got coming out of his place straight up. That's sure. awesome. Sure. Pretty that's awesome. impressive. So oh, yeah, cool. Very cool. Well, anyway, guys, like uh, if you're looking to support the show, please go over to rockfin.com for uh, rockfin.com forward slash truezilla. Um, if you, you can sign up for a free account, if you haven't already, please, I mean, why are you watching on YouTube? Like, that's just insane. You know, come watch our shows over at, uh, Rockfin. All of your favorite people are yeah. leaving YouTube yeah. at, at a faster and faster rate. Yeah. Well, it's a funny story. Okay. So we're, here's a funny story for us. So in, front, in the union of the unwanted, there's like a little group chat, which is like the coolest thing ever. Right. So we're in the little group chat and, uh, the other night it was, um, you know, Rockfin like was down or something like their servers were down. Like you click on the website and like all the video, none of the media was there. And it was really weird. And I was like, holy shit, did they get taken out or what's going on? And then uh, it was Graham from Gramerica was in the group chat. He's like, what the fuck you guys think? You guys just did a freaking two hour episode on vaccines and child trafficking. <laughs> no, no. And then at the end of the episode, you told everybody to go join you on Rockfin. I mean, what do you expect? And I'm like, oh, yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so totally. I'll bet that but, that's more true than not, honestly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, sure. And so that was pretty, I was like, damn, okay, good point. But anyway, so uh, yes, rockfin.com, Truzilla. Uh, we got Aaron joining us over on the Patreon, you know, um, first member. Thank you so much, Aaron. You're the man. Uh, Patreon's open. We've got some bonus content coming up on there soon. Um, we're going to fill it up. And of course, come check us out, truezilla.org slash shirts. Get yourself a nice Truezilla shirt. They're off the hook. They're pretty legit. Um, the, the hoodies are amazing. They're hoodies super, are amazing. super soft. Yeah. I'm, a, I, again, hoodie connoisseur, and I'm telling you, pretty cool designs, I say, also, guys. Yeah. Yeah, and I've been getting into Bitcoin lately, dude. Bitcoin is uh, it's a very interesting little thing. Like, I had no idea how big of a, a rabbit hole that thing is, dude. Like, just you're learning about uh, Heikinashi candles. I'm learning about uh, ETH 2.0. Like, it's just like, holy shit, dude. Like, uh, tokens, tokenization. Like, it's pretty it's pretty insane. But we got a Bitcoin donation button on truesell.org, too. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But anyway, um, you guys... So awesome. Love you all so much. Oh, and uh, we just got a donation while we were sitting here from uh, Chris, Chris P. Uh, sent us a little PayPal donation from the website. So thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate thank you, it. Chris. Dude. 
you guys love it wow everybody thank you so very much for That's supporting fine. us for sitting in i want to please encourage you again chris down at core fusion in yes. eugene off of river road please come and find him i am megan sitting here with scott and ed and we wish all of you intellectual prosperity good night Ding.